Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. Notice that we don't have x on the right hand side, we only have y. So we have dy over dx equals 1 minus y squared, and we're going to be solving for y values. There is no initial condition, so we're going to find a general solution up to some constants. All right, let's see how we can solve a problem like this. First of all, I want you to notice that there's something special about this equation, which we will look at at the end, and we'll kind of discuss what type of function this can be. And you could, you could be thinking, maybe somewhat trigonometrically, and then hopefully you'll arrive at something meaningful. So this is a separable differential equation. So to separate the variables, I'm going to go ahead and put the 1 minus y squared on the left-hand side and the dx on the right-hand side. Some people say dy over dx is not a fraction. You can't multiply both sides by dx, but it is a fraction, no matter what people say. So the next step would be to integrate both sides. And then because the variables are separated, we should be able to integrate easily. And 1 over 1 minus y squared, how do you integrate it? There's a couple of ways to go about it. Let me show you both. The first method would be my, my favorite, uh, the trigonometric substitution. So you can replace y with something like sine theta, because what would happen is 1 minus sine squared is going to give you cosine squared, which is good because we'll have some trigonometric transformations. But if y is sine theta, dy is going to be cosine theta d theta. Okay, It's like differentiating, but we just add the d theta. And now if you do the replacements, dy over 1 minus y squared becomes cosine theta d theta divided by 1 minus sine squared, which is cosine squared theta. And then you can go ahead and simplify this. Cosine and cosine squared, one of them will be gone. You'll have a 1 at the end. And this will be like 1 over cosine theta, which is secant theta d theta. Now, you may or may not know the integral of secant. There's a really nice, cool trick uh, that allows you to find uh, the integral of secant. Or you can use, is that called wire stress substitution? Something like z equals tangent x over 2, so on and so forth. But uh, I'm just going to show you the other cool method, or you can just memorize this. The integral of secant theta is ln secant theta plus tangent theta. Okay, and then plus c, but we're not going to worry about it until the end. And this comes from the fact that you can take secant theta, multiply by secant times tangent, and divide by that. And that basically gives you the derivative of secant plus tangent in the numerator, which gives kind of, kind of gives you du over u, and then it becomes ln. Make sense? Hopefully that makes sense, and you can kind of try it for yourself. Now, what is secant theta? What is tangent theta? Well, because we made an assumption like this, we can go ahead and kind of transform, like sine theta is y, so we're going to draw a right triangle. Theta doesn't have to be acute, by the way, but we're just going to use variables here. Sine theta is y, so it's going to be y and 1. This is going to be the square root of 1 minus y squared from Pythagorean theorem. And then uh, secant theta is just going to be the reciprocal of cosine, which is 1 over square root of 1 minus y squared. So secant would be this one, and tangent would be y over square root of 1 minus y squared. Awesome. Let's go to make the replacements, and then that'll give us the integral on the left, and then we're going to integrate on the right, and then add our constant, okay? So the integral of dy over 1 minus y squared, which is the integral of secant theta d theta, which is equal to this, which is equal to ln square root of 1 minus y squared plus y over square root of 1 minus y squared, of course, the whole thing. Normally, we're supposed to use absolute value. In this case, I just avoided it, uh, but you can add it if you want. So that's the integral that we have on the left-hand side. What about the right-hand side? Well, it's fairly easy to do because it's just equal to x. Great, so this is equal to x plus a constant. Nice. But can we make it nicer? Probably. First of all, you can make a common denominator, even though it's no big deal. That's going to give us 1 minus y squared plus y over, because when we multiply these, the radical disappears, and then we get the square root of 1 minus y squared. This is ln, and then that's equal to x plus c. Now, at this point, you can do something magical, and that is, uh, you can use the definition. This is e, e to the power of that, so 1 minus y squared plus y 
over the square root of 1 minus y squared is going to be e to the power x plus c, which you can write as e to the power x times e to the power c. Since c is a constant, e to the c is a constant. We can replace it with k, and this can be written as k times e to the power x. So what is the y value? That's a good question, right? So to find the y value, you can go ahead and do a couple different things. For example, you can square both sides. But I think we might be better off if we uh, saved it. I'm not exactly sure, by the way, but this looks like it's going to be better if we keep it this way. And so let me go ahead and kind of separate them and then square both sides. I think when we square both sides, we're going to get something pretty interesting. We're going to square the first term. We're going to square the second term. Awesome. And then we're going to multiply these and double the result. So it's going to be like 2y because these two are going to cancel out. And we're going to get k squared. We're going to get k squared. Oops. k squared times e to the power 2x. Now, again, you're going to need to solve for y. But how do you do that, right? It's going to be a good question. Looks like uh, we can make a common denominator here and multiply this by that's going to be a quartic i think right? i don't know but something should come out of this so let me go ahead and show you the other integration method and then i'll show you the results from wolfram alpha hopefully you can make sense of it now another way to integrate this expression is to use what's called partial fractions so i'm going to go ahead and write this as one plus y times one minus y first and then I want to assume that this can be separated into a over 1 plus i plus b over 1 minus i. Because the factors in the denominator are rational, the numerator should be constants because there's always a difference of 2 in degrees, right? I mean, there's a difference of 1, sorry. Now, by making a common denominator, you should be able to find the values of a and b. And that's actually going to come from, uh, like, just replace y with 0. You get, actually y with no one of these should be a one okay this should be a plus sign replace y with one actually not zero if you replace y with one this disappears you get 2b equals 1 2b or not 2b b becomes one half if you replace y with negative one you get uh, 2a equals one and a also becomes one half which means you can totally pull it out and if you do you're going to get something like one over two and you're going to integrate one over one plus y plus 1 over 1 minus y dy. And these are very easy in to integrate. For example, this one would be ln 1 plus y. This one would be ln 1 minus y. And there's going to be a 1 half on the outside. Now, when you set this equal to x plus c, which is the integral on the right-hand side, then I think things are going to be a little easier. Let me see. First of all, we can combine these and, of course, multiply two, both sides by 2. So we can write this as ln 1 minus y squared equals 2x plus 2c. And then 1 minus y squared becomes e to the power 2x plus 2c, which you can write as k times e to the power 2x. We've done that before, remember? And then you can kind of isolate the 1 and kind of write it like this. And from here, you can square root both sides. But again, we got a total different answer. And I don't know why these two answers are so different. I probably messed up somewhere. Apologize if I did. But you're going to let me know how this goes. Because I'm about to show you. The results from Wolfram Alpha, ta -da, da da By the way, when I saw this problem, I saw a solution that said the solution is hyperbolic tangent of x, and I differentiated it, and it actually gave me the same thing, sort of. But the problem is a hyperbolic tangent can be written as e to the power 2x minus 1 over e to the power 2x plus 1. They don't seem to agree that much. So I don't know why there's a difference. Maybe it's just one of those values where c sub 1 is 0. Uh, but why don't we get the general solution from hyperbolic tangent? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.